Hi everyone, welcome to another restoration series at Mr. Carlson's lab. This is a Hammerland SP600 communications receiver, one of the finest from way back when. This was used at a listening post, so it should be a really interesting radio receiver to go through and restore. Now, I haven't really looked at this since it's been sitting here on the shelf. I don't know what's under the chassis. It could be an early or a later production radio receiver. The earlier production ones had the uh, Bumblebee style capacitors in them that had a really high failure rate. And then the later production, they changed those out and they started using ceramic discs. So there's a hint, if you're looking for one of these things, you definitely want a later production date. It would make the uh, restoration quite a bit easier. So I don't know what's ahead of us, but we're gonna find that out together. I have looked in the top though, and it is you know, relatively clean inside. So it was uh, taken care of. There's lots of cables and stuff attached to it. So uh, we'll have to address that as well. Now this is gonna to have to obviously be a series. Uh, up to this date, I would say that this would be probably one of the most complex radio receiver restorations that I have shared or that I am about to share with all of you. And of course, if this restoration series gets, I guess you could say enough attention and the attention is positive, I will move on to even more complex radio receivers like the R390 and of course probably the most complex which would be the RA17C12 Raquel or RA117 style radio receiver. So uh, of course Collins being mechanically complex and the uh, Raquel being the electrically complex. Uh, anyways, we'll get to that down the road if this gets enough attention. So if you are interested in this particular series, definitely share it, spread the word, and uh, tap the uh, you know the thumbs up symbol and uh, subscribe and uh, you know, super thanks or whatever, and let me know that you are interested in these restoration series type videos and uh, that will also uh, say how quickly I go through these as well. For those of you that are not interested in uh, restoration videos, don't fear, I will pepper through this series all sorts of other different types of videos as well, modern equipment repairs and troubleshooting and testing and teardowns and all that kind of stuff as well. So again, depending on the interest, if I get lots and lots of interest in this particular series, I will really move through this series very quickly and on to the next radio receiver. So anyways, in order for us to get going, we need to see what's inside this and see what we're up against. So what I'm going to do now is I'll flip this thing up and I take all the screws out and I'll take you through that process. And uh, let's see if it has uh, the bumblebees or whether it has ceramic discs and move on from there. And I'll explain a little bit about the radio receiver as I'm going along as well. So this will be part one. This thing has just a ton of cables that are attached to the back of it that'll probably end up all getting removed. I would turn this thing around, but... It's uh, a little heavy. Uh, see if I can get you to, to take a look at this here. Uh, I need a, a rotary table or something like that for these. Let's see here. There we go. Look at all those cables. So strapped to the back. I don't know what's been going on here. Running through the hole here and this looks like speaker output or something and a braid and all that kind of stuff. Again, this thing was at a in form of a listening post way back when, what does it say on the plug here? 600, it says. So the way that this looks, it does look like maybe one of the newer production ones. I'm not really quite sure. So it did, you know, the fuses have got the cover on it. It doesn't look like it's cracked at all or anything though. So, so this has been, you know, very well taken care of at this point. In order to get this thing out of the case, uh, I'm going to end up have to, having to take all the screws out of the, off the face. And then this thing should just, uh, you know, basically slide straight out. So that's how that's going to work. I may be able to undo these cables, hopefully from inside, which uh, I'll just move this around and I'll, uh, I'll move the camera inside so we can maybe see where these cables are actually going because it's, uh, yeah, they're pretty solid in there. Here's a look down inside through the top lid. So it has a little clip on the lid here that allows for easy servicing to uh, change the tubes or anything if something goes wrong inside. As you can see, all of these little shields here all have tubes under them. And there are a lot of tubes all over the place I'm under here as well. So uh, yeah. Very busy radio communications receiver. And um, looks like this is coax that's running in. So this is where their, their signal is coming in here. Fancy input there. I guess that'll fit through that hole in the back. It does. 
there it is. So that'll make things a lot easier to, uh, to get this thing out of the case. It even has the, the tools still in it. Oxidized, but they're still in here. All the little Allen wrenches are all still in here. You see that? Still clipped in there. So it is in very nice condition. Full load of crystals here. And on the front, there is a, a little list for those crystals, which we'll take a look at as well. At least it's all complete on the top side and it looks very clean as well. So it definitely is a good candidate for restoration, I would think. So, so what I'll do here is uh, I'll start taking the screws out and get this thing out of the case. This is the bulk of the weight right here. So this is a very heavy transformer. And then there's a couple of small reactors on the bottom here as well. Uh, very important to make sure that the electrolytic caps are changed in these things because uh, it absolutely destroys those reactors if they short. But uh, yeah, we'll get the thing out of the case and uh, let's take a look at what we're up against on the underside. That's the exciting stuff. So this will just pull straight out. I'll need to turn this sideways because this is off the desk here. And uh, I'll get this all set up and we'll take a look on the underside. Well, that's definitely nice. So the bypass capacitors in this radio receiver are pretty much all disc style caps. So this is definitely a later unit. So uh, of course those were replaced for dependability way back when, right? Hammerlin went with the disc style and this is just loaded with discs everywhere. If this was the earlier style with the bumblebee caps, every single one of these would have been a, a bumblebee cap to replace. So you see where they all are in here. These are very dependable and they very rarely fail. Of course they do, but they very rarely fail. So these can be left alone. These are about the only kind of those and mica caps in these old radio receivers are about the only ones that can stay. So these bathtub style capacitors will all have to go. This has to go, this has to go. And there's a bunch of them on the back as well here. See that there's a bunch here. These all have to go. Uh, this down here has to go. This will have to go, you know, all the, all the other capacitors that uh, are not a disc style cap will uh, have to end up going. So there's still quite a bit of work there. I don't know what they've done under here. So hopefully in the tuning assembly, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's just about as straightforward. Getting at the capacitors in the tuning assembly isn't so bad once you just rotate it and go through and change them all. It's, it's not too big of a deal, even if they are the uh, round tubular style. So most likely they are. So those all have to be changed. So all in all, it's looking like um, the restoration may go a little easier than it would if it was uh, a bumblebee style restoration. So um, very heavy, um, as you can see here, I'll try and rotate this around. Usually what I do, it helps with the bench here, is uh, I just grab a bunch of these, they're like a, a little felt protection for the bottom of chairs. And I put them on the corners of the radio receiver and you can slide the radio receiver around very nicely by doing that. So um, you just put it under the sharp corners that, you know, contact the bench and um, it'll protect the bench from getting scratched. As you can see, that would be digging into the bench right now, but instead it digs into the, um, into the actual uh, felt instead. So I'll rotate this around and we'll take a look at the uh, top side without the cover on. Here's a closer look at the bench destroyer from the top. So this one here, as you can see, lots of tubes with the case removed. You can really get a better idea. Big power transformer over here. You can see how big that is compared to my hand. And then there's a reactor here and another one under here. There's a tube hiding under this. 
uh, as well. These are all alignment points, so you pop these little caps up and you put an alignment tool down in there and you do the alignment through these, all of these little areas here, and of course lots of alignment points here and here and all over the place. So everywhere you look is an alignment point in a radio receiver like this. So it is nice and clean, it is a nice candidate for a restoration. So uh, what do you think? Should we go through and uh, do the entire job on this one here and bring this thing back to the way it was when it rolled off the factory floor? Let me know in the comments below and uh, again, your feedback means a lot. Again, I don't want to be taking on restorations like this if there is minimal interest. So uh, if I find that there is, put this down without destroying my bench. If I find there is lots of interest, I'll definitely go through and uh, take all of you along for the ride. Thanks for stopping by the lab today. I hope you enjoyed part one of this possible new video series involving the Hammerland SP600 here. Again, this video really is just about putting the feelers out there to make sure that there is enough interest in a restoration of this caliber before I go about making an entire series on it. So if you're enjoying this series, definitely let me know by giving me a big thumbs up, uh, subscribe, super thanks, and uh, share the video. That's very important as well. So the more views, the better on something like this. Again, this is going to take quite a bit of time and there will be you know, quite a few parts to this video series in order to convey the amount of information that I want to convey in a restoration of this caliber. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. Lots of projects for you to build there involving new electronics, surface mount builds, right back to point to point, and uh, troubleshooting skills and all that great stuff can be greatly enhanced up there. So I have many, many videos, over 200 videos on Patreon that are not a part of YouTube whatsoever. So they're completely separate and uh, they're up there for you to learn from. So lots of great content there. Definitely check it out. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll pin the link at the top of the comment section. So if you click on that link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.